I cannot be upset about this problem that I cannot solve, you know? So I ask for help. And it is at that point where I don't get help that I get upset. So mind you, I went to the cops and after I left the precinct, I started to cry and told myself, I'm not gonna like bottle this up. I'm not gonna like pretend I don't have to cry. Fuck it, I am just gonna cry. So I unchained my bike and like, you know, cried. And then at one point I felt really sad, so I crouched down and continued to cry in my nice little fetal position while holding my bike because I was very, very anxious and paranoid and afraid that somebody would take my bike because if somebody took my bike, that's it, bro. That's it. Suicide right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. Right here, right now. I do not give a fuck. I mean, first, I'm going to take the uh, nice bike lock from around my waist. And then whip their skull in. You know? Because he chose the worst day, bro. I literally just fixed that bike. Like, either of those two things would have done it. Like, I just fixed the bike. And I got robbed. You chose the worst day. If I catch you with this bike lock, you better hope somebody comes to help you. Because I'm 27 years of rage, pal. I'm just learning to deal with it. 27 years of rage. So, I was hugging my bike because I was very afraid of anything else bad happening. Because, you know, I'm already trying to keep it together. I'm just sitting there like, oh, I had plans on getting food tonight. Now I can't. I had plans on getting papers tonight. Now I can't. Thank God I managed to get weed before any of this shit happened. Which sucks because I wanted to go to Rite Aid before that. <laughs> Technically, I tried to buy a dog. But Cash App was like, nah. You got life lessons, pal. And your life lessons, they're going to cost you $390 expensive life lessons these life lessons were made by white people that's why they're so expensive you're gonna have to deal with it too bad so I'm laying on the floor crying contemplating what I want to do and you know I was reasonable and rational with it I was asking myself so I was like so I could go home and cry you know lay in my bed nice soft nice soft bed get into the fetal position and cry I could go home and smoke definitely not go on a bike ride because I live on a hill and every direction is down so if I go towards home I'm gonna have to bike up a hill and there nothing sucks more than going up a hill when you were just dead inside just completely destroyed and now you gotta bike up this fucking hill with your bike that has fucked up brakes so now I gotta put in extra work because my brakes are constantly hugging my wheels no mm -mm. nope so I can't can't do that mm. can't do that because it's like if I, I want to go downhill downhill like biking riding my bike down a hill that would have made me very happy that would have distracted me I would have been able to take some deep breaths have a nice moment have one of those nice moments where it's like when I'm riding down, usually down a hill, like it could be a straight path, nice long straight path that I don't have to worry about. Or going down a hill, nice speeds, you don't have to worry about like the, the lights because like you have all the green lights, but there's nobody really in front of you in the lane and there's nobody behind you to come like sneak up on you. So you can just like ride and cruise and go really fast and close your eyes and stick your arms out and just feel free, you know? That moment really like gets me it really does a lot for me but you know I can't do that if you bike up a hill so I also thought about you know just ending it going somewhere jumping off something going home cutting something I also thought about going to a hospital can't say I didn't think of that but the thing about hospitals is you lose all your freedom and literally all the things that I do to like get by to just like combat my depression because like the way I feel if I'm not cre if I don't create 
I'm dead on the inside. Like, the worse my depression is, the worse my desire to live is, the less I'll create. And the worse I'll feel about it. But... Yeah, I thought about that. But I don't want to do that. So I sat there in the fetal position and cried until I decided what to do. That felt, that was kind of therapeutic because I didn't really give a fuck. But at the same time, if somebody pulls up on me and it's like, hey, are you okay? What are you doing? Wedged between these two cars. <laughs> somebody pulls up, it's probably going to be a police officer or a fireman. Because, you know, I'm literally between the fire department and the police station. And I'm pretty sure if a police officer pulled up, we would probably assume I was upset about whatever I just went into the precinct for. And then, you know, just tell him. I'm really upset. I got robbed. Now I'm stressed because I was trying to do something nice for myself. And I don't want to pay rent late. You know, that, that sucks. We can't be late this month. And unemployment didn't come through last week so I don't know if it's gonna come through this week and technically it fucked me the week before that so I don't know what's happening financially so I can't just like boom have that money you know subscribe to my OnlyFans cause that really helps um in the long run it really helps that's how we gonna get that last $50 that we need for rent OnlyFans so subscribe to my OnlyFans Make suggestions that are not things that involve my ass and the things inside of it, please. And thank you. I am so desperate for suggestions that are not my ass and things inside of it. Oh my guys, please. Please subscribe. I don't know. You want me to cover myself in peanut butter? I'll do that. I'll do the weird shit. Just no more scat, please. <laughs> so many requests for scat. I don't know why. So I sat there until I decided I wanted to go home and smoke and be numb. I also texted Mike. I told him I got robbed. I didn't know what he was going to do. I don't know what he was going to say. But if anybody was going to like, because technically that was 300 out of the 1,000 that I get paid. So he could potentially send me more. He could potentially go into sugar daddy mode and be like, okay, here's, here, here, here here feel better <laughs> and make it all go away or we could talk about it you know I don't know I just needed help so I started asking people for help started like texting my friends well I was texting my friends before that and then I disappeared on everybody because I was upset and they weren't helping me feel less suicidal so I mean, yeah, I was talking to my friends, but they weren't helping me feel less suicidal, so I went, I said that. I said that I went out to go talk to the cops, and I don't know. I was going to talk to the cops and see how I felt after that, you know? I felt like crying, and then I felt like going home, and I was very disoriented on my bike ride home, which, I don't know if it's hilarious or tragic, because that was a very complicated bike ride home. It was stupid. I, I was riding on Broadway, which tends to be tight because it has like two-way traffic, but then you can park your car there and it's under a train station and the traffic was heavy in every direction today. Like literally some, some corners were like cars were sticking out from the side street. So I had to like do a lot of swerving and then at one point some guy walked into the street and I thought he was just gonna like go to the sidewalk? Like don't people usually cross the street to go to the sidewalk? But nope. He decided he was gonna continue to walk between the, the moving cars waiting for the red light and the parked cars. The space I was biking through. And, you know, I figured he was going to, like, scoonch over to the side because there's a bicycle coming right at you. And mind you, I'm biking really fast. Like, I'm trying to get home as fast as I can. And my body is on autopilot. Literally, I'm staring, staring forward. 
basically like constantly reminding myself just like focus on the visuals and don't like spaz out and just like stare into space but like focus on where you're going because we're biking here you know and if anything's gonna happen to me while I'm biking it's not gonna be of my volition which makes me so mad why the universe is like yeah no you should kill yourself I'm gonna keep giving you reasons to kill yourself but I'm not gonna do it for you oh. mm, that's gross that's gay bro <laughs> But, you know, I thought he was going to scooch over or get on the fucking sidewalk because, like, he passed a few cars. He had a few openings to get onto the sidewalk. Maybe he was too Jabba to fit. I don't know. I don't know his prerogative. Maybe he was suicidal. Maybe he wanted to get hit. And part of me, part of me didn't give a fuck. Part of me was just like, bike, 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 let's just bike out. There seems to be a dude in the street. He doesn't seem to be taking a side or getting out of the street. Fuck it. Let's hit him. I don't really wanna... No, I'm too out of it to like maneuver around some fucking idiot. Like, mind you, I don't like... Okay. Let me not say I don't know how I made it through that space because I maneuvered through that space. I had to like do one of those things where you like take the nose of your bike and you turn it so I'm like turning around him but as I'm turning around him I'm leaning over so the bike is turning but it's also like kind of like how motorcycles do really tight turns so it's like that so I'm turning while I'm also like on the side so I'm cornering around him squeezing between the fucking truck and this guy try like you know leaning away from the truck so I don't slap up against it and like, lose control Ironically, though, that snapped me out of it because I was dead numb, mentally out of it. The only thing really keeping me in it was the fact that I had to keep swerving between cars, but swerving between cars is what I do all the time, so, you know? So I'm just going, and then this guy gets, comes, and I just get infuriated because I always get infuriated when people are just ridiculously ridiculously unapologetically stupid I just if I could strangle you with my bike lock and get away with it which I probably can because nobody pays attention to my ass anyway so they won't even know who the fuck strangled this dude it was like oh I think there was a bike it's gone now but I think there was a bike I didn't see him. <sighs> that makes me so sad, but when I turn to a life of violence due to anger and rage, that's gonna be the biggest blessing. <laughs> I'm gonna get away with so many murders. I'm gonna be on camera and I'm just gonna be oblivious. This is like a blur. I'm just gonna be a blur on this camera type shit. You know, you know. That shit crazy. But that snapped me out of it. I hate when this shit happens, because then I always, like, think about it. And I'm always trying to, like... Because I'm like, oh yeah, I was supposed to buy papers. I was going to get a box of papers. But I can't now, because I can't afford that. Because I only have, like, $3 to... $2 to my name, because a dollar had to go for fucking... The, the pills. The pills I know I'm going to have a terrible time with. Because I got to eat. I only eat like once a day and I gotta take these twice a day and you gotta eat an adequate amount I don't be hungry enough to be eating adequate amounts to not get nauseous off of fucking medication I felt really hopeless like I kept wanting someone to hold me like half the time when these things happen and I get really upset, I always like think about how I just like want, wish there was somebody there to hold me. Which is funny because usually like a lot of the times, the rare occasions, or not the rare occasions, there there is a rare occasion where somebody will hold me and it'll have like zero effect. But you know, that's that's how they see it. They ignore the fact that they're also like texting and talking to other people while I'm having a panic attack 
or like I need them to do something but then they don't want to do it like I used to have this this whole ordeal with people where I would just be crying and upset and they would hold me at arm's length they would like put their hands on my shoulders and hold me at arm's length and then I would like try to like go into them so for them to hold me and then they would just like push me away and hold me at arm's shoulders and they're like I want to look you in the eye and I'm like why if I'm upset why do you need to look me in the eye like clearly I'm too upset to even talk and you want to look me in the eye while I tell you what's wrong you can't hold me and then then they were like oh we had the conversation let me hold you now and I'm like no nigga I'm numb I don't give a shit anymore it's like I'm already fucking too hurt to be healed congrats and I'm like oh I tried holding you but it didn't work it didn't work because you took you waited till it was too late you waited for me to go fucking numb you waited for me to sit there and be like oh well you didn't really want to hold me I had to like force you to do it or explain shit or I'll just be thinking about oh there's somebody else somewhere else you'd rather be or I'm a burden to you or I'm a distraction or some shit there's always some shit or you always have that occasion where it's like, I don't know if I should enjoy this because, oh, now we're having sex. I don't like that feeling where I just want to be really small in my body. I keep having, like, flashbacks to when I was sitting on the carpet, just, like, not really hugging myself I had my arms around my head and my knees up so my face was buried in my metaphorical lap and I'm just like squeezing harder and harder as I'm crying ironically thinking about how like at this point it's audible crying I'm making legit sounds and gasping for air and coughing and wheezing but I know that nobody's gonna hear me or see me. I was even sitting in the hallway at one point crying and I kept like getting paranoid that somebody was gonna like come out and be like oh are you okay? But at the same time I'm like no you're literally just being paranoid. Nobody's gonna come out here or if anything they're not even gonna notice that you're crying. And it gets really dark and you have those thoughts. Like I reached out to people and tried to talk about it. Like even when it was just a small problem, I reached out to people and I was like, oh yeah, no, I just got like the thing you didn't go through. That sucks. And I'm upset about that because I really want this doll. It's gonna be my first pre BJD, first official BJD, not non-fake, not a recast. And it's kind of a big deal because it's like, as I was telling someone, it's like, I, I wanted one when I was a kid. And, like, I fell in love with them. <coughs> They're just beautiful dolls. And the customization on, customization on them is crazy. My throat just got very itchy. And my tummy very rumbly but I always wanted one and I wanted one like really bad like to customize one and the goal is to like one day make one but like to buy one to put all the skills that I learned customizing Nendos and then customizing the two BJDs that I just got and then like all my clay work and all the resin stuff that I've been learning how to do the past year and a half or so is gonna come into like play and then it's like I've been learning all this stuff even like watching videos on how to make doll wigs and how to make the eyes and I got a cast so I, uh, a mold so I can make the eyes it's like all this stuff and it's like I believed that getting this doll was meant to be so I tried really hard and succeeded in that, but then everything went downhill after it got declined. And thankfully a friend of mine lent me the money. Because it, it's less upsetting to me to have to pay back the money than it is not having it or not being able to do those things. Because it's like...
I can't pay rent without it and then I'm gonna be in a backlog and I just got out of a ba backlog like past few months I was able to pay my rent myself or I guess through my own means without having to ask a friend pay help me pay because I had to have a friend help me pay for a few months and I felt really bad about that and then he said he couldn't help me anymore so then I was late a lot to the point where I was paying like it'd be the 20th of a month and I was still paying off the month and then this whole pandemic happened and everything just like went to shit but then I like found a way to like start paying every month on time but like this this is the one month that it fucking matters that we pay on time and I wouldn't be able to pay so it's like I can't take care of myself I can't look out for myself I can't recognize scams I can't listen to myself I can't do fucking anything I don't want to be here I don't want to be with me I don't want to be alone in this I don't want to constantly be reminded that I'm alone and that I don't have anyone to talk to and that I don't have anyone to ask for help and I don't have like the ability to defend myself do you mind? excuse me miss can you can you not dig through there? bastard and I reached out today on a multitude of levels I talked to somebody when I couldn't get the doll cause cash app took the money and ran and as soon as I like because every time this happens, it hits hard, and it just hits harder and harder, because it's just like a reminder of the same lessons that I keep failing. Ooh, I don't know if I'm covering the microphone. And it's like every time, every single time I try to do something for myself, it backfires in such a big way. And it's just like, like I said, I was going to try my hardest and my damnedest and do everything I could to, like, make my life a life worth living. And then I just got slapped hella hard today. I said, every time that shit happens so frequently, every time I try to do something, try to do something good that'll, like, make me look forward to tomorrow and want to live but then it's like not even that safe it's not safe until it gets into my hand because then you never know when USPS is going to send it to Michigan even though it just came to Brooklyn like what the fuck I talked to somebody the second I felt like jumping literally texted my friend I was like I just got robbed I feel like jumping off the roof Cause that's legit how I felt. I was just sitting there. Like, you know something's wrong if I'm not moving. Because it's like, that's how I prevent myself from self-harming. I will just continue to do whatever I'm doing. Music usually helps, but Spotify is what I listen to music on the most. And it sucks ass when it comes to listening to music when you're in a mood. Because then it's like, oh, sad song. Sad song. It was definitely on a flow today. But then it, in the middle of its flow, it would be like, commercial 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 oh press this button to listen to 30 seconds a 30 second ad so you can have 30 minutes of for ad free music jk commercial 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 and i'm just like this is pretty hard to cry to bro because then you gotta close the app and reopen it and then it'll play one song and then another three commercials and even if you let the commercials rock like i was dead in in that mood in my head where I'm just listening to these three commercials and then it'll play two songs and then three more commercials and I'm just like I'm just gonna watch YouTube bro like maybe I'll watch a video and it'll make me laugh you know cause laughter is a good remedy to sadness and whatever and then I texted another friend cause I don't know like I legit just wanted to die and I wasn't sure I wasn't going to not die. I dead was not sure I wasn't going to go out and just find like a high ledge and be like, oh, this is nice. Boink. Like at one point I wanted to go up on the roof, but I continued to sit. 
damn, this is 51 minutes. I'm gonna have to end it soon, otherwise it's gonna get corrupted. But anyway, maybe I'll make a part two with what else I learned today on my panic attack and being another victim of scam again because I have a serious problem and inability to listen to myself. But we're working on that. We're working on that. Dear God. Dear God. The time I turn down scam and don't get fucking scammed, I'm going to be so proud. I'm going to be so in love with myself at that moment. But anyway, 52 minutes is cutting it close. So I'm going to end this here. Dear God, who are th all around us, please let this save to my phone. Anyway, you guys, thank you for watching this video. And know that you are loved by this guy and that, that guy. If you know, if no one in your life and you don't love you, you are loved and appreciated by me and him. By us. By them. Bye.